The three packs I'm going to compare here are is the Red Lithium High Output XC 8.0, the Red Lithium XC 5.0, and uh, the sticker does say it's a 9 amp hour battery, the one I built. It definitely is not. It would be closer to a 6.5 or a 6.6 .6 amp hour battery based on the cells that I put into this pack. The tool that I'm going to be using for this comparison is a Milwaukee M18 fuel blower. Now this thing is an absolute pig on batteries, so this lets me do this test pretty quick and easy to find out where this thing kind of sits. My gut hunch for this cell is it's going to sit somewhere between the XC5 and the 8, uh, but there's only one way to find out, so let's get to testing it. So to make sure that this test was fair, I made sure every single battery was topped off with the factory Milwaukee charger and I got a green light on all the cells. The only one that didn't give me a green light, uh, I typically store my cells fully charged, that way they're ready when I use them, was the uh, home built battery, but uh, I think it was on there for maybe 30 seconds and it gave me the green light as well. So then we can proceed to the test. First battery I'm going to test is the XC 5.0 and uh, we'll just slap this thing on. The good thing about the uh, Milwaukee blower, it also has a throttle lock uh, at wide open and I'm gonna use the high speed on the blower as well to run the test. And uh, we'll start the stopwatch and off she goes. Now at six minutes and eight seconds, this thing stopped. And uh, the reason why it stopped, I had a flashing LEDs on the battery. Uh, it was just plain old overheated, it was too hot. So what I did with this one is I just went and brought it outside. Uh, it's about uh, uh, just about freezing for the Fahrenheit folks on here. We'll just use that because that's universal. Uh, I let it sit out there while I completed the test on the remaining two batteries. So we'll come back to that one uh, in a bit once it cools off. The next battery we're going to put on is the XC 8.0. Uh, this is kind of the benchmark uh, battery in my opinion. I found this to be a really high quality battery and I noticed the uh, duration lasts way longer on the outdoor tools than the uh, other previous batteries I had. So uh, let's see how she does. Now this one whined and went for uh, quite a while and closer to the end about the last, uh, I don't know, two or three minutes, you could definitely hear it was getting close to its <laughs> being dead. It did go all the way through without any thermal overload or anything like that. And it finished up at a time of 16 minutes and 27 seconds. I have no doubt that that is going to be the time to beat. Battery is completely drained, completely dead, slightly warm, definitely runs cooler than the other battery. But that kind of makes sense. It is supposed to be running cooler. It has a higher quality of cell than the uh, XC5. Time to start my home built battery. We'll chuck that thing on and start the stopwatch and see what that one does. So my home built went right through to dead two at a time of 12 minutes and 17 seconds. Not as good as the 8, but that kind of goes with my hunch of where I figured it would be. This battery also went through right till dead, and uh, it ended up a little bit warm. Not, I would say, I would say it's not as warm as the 8.0, which does make sense because there's three cells here in series versus the uh, two in the XC 8.0. It's definitely cooler than the 5.0. Now, the next concern when comparing these batteries is as soon as you run them dead, will they go right back onto the charger or will they do something funny? Now the Milwaukee battery pops right back onto the charger, starts start charging, and uh, it just keeps going. Both of them did that. Both of them I could go put right back on the charger. The BMS on the home built battery did not allow me to do that. I had to first cool that battery off and I just charged one of the other batteries and by that time it was fine. Uh, then it goes on to the charger. And I've noticed this is pretty consistent anytime I do use this battery. If I'm using it with a high demand tool, actually the only tool that'll do this is the blower. If I'm blowing the driveway using this battery, every time it comes back in, it's got to sit for a little bit before it'll pick a charge back up. So now that the XC 5.0 is cooled off, let's uh, take a look and see what remaining runtime we can get out of this puppy. I'll do the same thing here. Just gonna throw it right back onto the blower and uh, to start the timer again and then we'll add those two times up to let this uh, to let us know kind of where this thing finished off so we got another four minutes and 22 seconds out of this puppy for a total runtime of 10 minutes and 30 seconds 
<laughs> with a coffee break in between. So I'm not too surprised at the results here. This is kind of where I thought the batteries would end up. The uh, XC 5.0 is uh, last with the 10 minutes and 30 second runtime. Home built battery shows up at a time of 12 minutes and 17 seconds. And the XC 8.0 is the best battery here at a runtime of 16 minutes and 27 seconds. Very much kind of where my gut hunch was after using these batteries where I figured it would fall. Now, if you compare the price on these things, that is where they are really going to change up like crazy. The XC 8.0 is showing up on sale at $199 and the list price is $342 from Acme Tools. The XC 5.0 is showing up at $159 list uh, and the regular is $222 for this one. The parts for the home built battery, they came off of batteryhookup.com and I've used this site before to make a different lithium titanate battery which also turned out really well. That battery is still functioning and working uh, about a year or so later. Great site if you uh, are looking into any DIY batteries, battery hookups great. Uh, use promo code HOUSEDADLIFE, it'll get you 5% off on your order if you pick up uh, anything from here. If you do want to see how I did make this battery, uh, I'll leave a link in the card up top. Overall, my impressions of this home-built battery are pretty positive. I'm pretty happy with it. I wouldn't hesitate to do it again. I probably will do it again. The batteries, all of them, are really reliant on the internal cells that you do put into them. So I do advise you, if you do build your own cells, make sure you use high-quality cells from a reputable vendor. And that's going to get you the best possible result on your battery packs. Hope somebody out there found this thing useful. And until next time, happy tooling. I don't know. See you again. <laughs>